As I've started my maddening run in Fire Emblem Engage, there's been a little bit of a discussion blooming in my community about what constitutes a proper maddening run. If the DLC invalidates it somehow, or if there's things you should or should not be doing when playing the game on maddening mode. So today, I wanted to organize my thoughts and present it to you guys in a way that I think will help provide some insight into what I'm doing with my playthrough of the game and what other people are doing. So let's talk about it. Hello everyone, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. I know usually I'm doing guides and things like that, but seeing as how I've been in the Fire Emblem community for a long time and I know that there can be some contentious discussion about difficulties and what constitutes a proper quote-unquote run of the game and all that type of stuff, I wanted to throw my two cents in there. So as I stated, I am just starting my first maddening mode run of Fire Emblem Engage. It took me a while to get through my first run because of streaming and doing guides and all that type of stuff. Uh, but I just started it not too long ago. We're up to chapter 7, I believe. And this is going to be my first run of the game where I have access to the extra like emblems DLC and all of the stat up items and extra weapons and things like that that come along with that. Uh, I also have my game linked to Fire Emblem Heroes, so I have access to the bond rings of uh, Anna, Sharina, and Alphonse, as well as their weapons. And there's been a lot of discussion going around about like how broken some of the DLC stuff is, giving you silver items, like, basically right off the bat, a bunch of extra money, a bunch of extra bond fragments, things like that, uh, SP books, just some of the busted skills, like the lineage from the Rivals Emblem for just increased XP permanently as soon as you equip it, or the Star Sphere from Tiki, which shoots all of your stat growth through the roof, all sorts of crazy stuff, and I have a setup for this first run of Maddening that I'm doing, that's very much tailored to my purposes, and because of that, people have been talking about kind of this idea that, oh, if you use the DLC, it's not a proper maddening run, or you're only, like, breaking the challenge of the DLC, if you, or of the, uh, of maddening mode, I should say, if you use the DLC, and there's no point to that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so here's what I'm doing in my maddening run, and, and here's why. I'm using the DLC in my maddening run because I have it, right? I didn't buy the DLC just to not use it going forward for the sake of challenge runs and things like that. I can always do that in the future, but it seems cool from what people have said. I haven't seen any of the DLC maps, but from what people have said, like they sound really fun, they sound really cool, the emblems sound like a ton of fun to use, even if they are just generically very strong, and some people have said it's kind of paid to win and everything, eh, you know. I agree with that sentiment, it's not competitive, you're not playing against other people, so it's not as big of a deal, but still, yes, very, very strong. So I'm going to be using the DLC because I want to check it out, and as a content creator, I kind of need to know how it works anyway, for the sake of guides and things like that. However, there are certain things about the DLC beyond the emblems that I'm not using. I'm not using the extra bond fragments that you get from it. I'm not using the silver weapons that you get from it. I'm not using the SP boosting items that you get from it. In a certain sense. And I'm not using the stat boosters that I got from it. In a certain sense. Let's go through that. So the silver weapons are just busted. <laughs> like, to get silver weapons for free that early on when there's no weapon levels that you need to train anymore and engage, you just have a weapon level based on your class and like what emblem you have. So you could just use a Silver Lance on Alfred from the start of the game, basically. Kind of changes the math a little bit when you're doing calculations and whatnot, when you can just blow something up with a Silver Lance that you might otherwise not be able to kill. Really brings the challenge level down. The stat boosters. I had no intention of using on any of my characters because as this is only my second run of the game, and as I'm trying to see what the actual challenge level of Maddening is, as people have praised it largely across the community, I didn't want to change that variable too much. I just want to see how units are able to perform, especially with fixed growths and things like that. Like, yeah, I could pump some speed wings and stuff into Alfred to make him more useful, but 
that would defeat the purpose. I want to see where Alfred sits just as a unit, right? Uh, as I get stat boosters, if I'm using a character and they need a boost, like, from the ones that you get in the actual base game, maybe I'll use those to complement their abilities. But as far as just stuff handed to you, not of interest to me. So what I did, just because I figured it'd be fun, is I dumped them all into Vander <laughs> to keep him relevant for a couple more chapters. Because I like him as a character. I like his design. He's fun to use. It's just, you know, he's one of the worst Jagans in the series, so... I pumped those into him, it let him be useful for a few more chapters, but he's pretty much been benched at this point as it is. It got like two or three extra chapters of use out of him, which I mean, hey, why not? The extra gold, again, not using. I want to manage my resources as they've been provided to us by the game and see how that all works. The SP books, I may wind up using, and this is where I kind of have to get into the larger discussion of character builds and guides and content that I'm doing. So I have a few characters that I want to do maddening guides for. The first one, a lot of you have seen my Brave King uh, Boucheron, or Brocheron, as some people have been saying, uh, guide that I put together. That was a hard mode guide using my Boucheron from hard mode, but that I feel would be applicable and would be quite good in maddening, and I advocated for that in the video. With the statement that I hadn't tried it in maddening yet. Well, since I'm in Maddening now, I want to try it and see if my theory can be executed on. Some people think that it won't work, some people think that it will, so I want to see. To keep that as quote-unquote valid of a build as possible, I'm not using any extra resources on Boucheron. He has the Noah turn, the axe from Fire Emblem Heroes, and we'll talk about that in a second, why I don't think that's a big deal. But as far as like free SP books, stat boosters, lineage the star sphere as abilities those are all things that i'm not using on boucheron because i want this to be a build that if it works works on a like maddening challenge run where you don't use any dlc or for someone who just doesn't have the dlc or doesn't want to use the dlc in maddening all that type of stuff i just want it to be here's the game here's boucheron here's the build here's how it executes right if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't no big deal one way or the other and that's how I'm trying to approach any build that I'm planning on doing for Maddening that I think it may be good in Maddening. There's a Jean build that one of my community members, the Incompletionist, put together. It's his build, and he kind of gave me some suggestions on how to use it. I want to put my own spin on it, try it out, see how it works. If it works out for me, cool. We'll do a guide on it. Other things like that, maybe characters that are underused in Maddening that I maybe find a good build for can use that build, make a guide, all that type of stuff. Any character like that, I don't want to use any of the DLC stuff on. Because again, if you don't have the DLC, or you're not using the DLC, or anything like that, I want my guides to be applicable for that. If it's a guide that uses DLC stuff very specifically, then I'll be very upfront about that, and I mean, that'll still be fun, there's still interesting content that can be done there, but for the sake of base game stuff, I want it to be clear that I'm very intentionally avoiding using paid boost stuff that comes in the DLC to make those builds happen. So that they can be applied across the board. Now I mentioned the Noah turn and the other Fey weapons. For me, that's not as big of a deal because I'm approaching this maddening run from the perspective of this isn't a maddening challenge run. This is a run of the game on maddening mode with all the difficulty that that entails with the goal of getting to the end game and having builds online and seeing how they work. So for me, getting past the early game a little bit faster is not a big deal. Getting past it a little bit easier is not a big deal. Because at the end of the day, and I mean, really, this could be applied to the silver weapons as well. It's kind of arbitrary that I decided to not use those versus using the fey weapons, but, you know, it is what it is. I wanted to be able to get through the early game. Still get a feel for how maddening is. Learn about the mode for myself. Get a little hands-on experience. But start to get characters online that I have these ideas for. And using stuff like the Fey weapons that don't give you any permanent stat boosts, don't give you any XP changes or anything like that, aren't giving you extra SP that you wouldn't be able to get normally, that's not a big deal. Because you're still just getting the resources 
out of your experience fighting that you would otherwise. It just might be a little bit faster to do. Now, if we're talking like a low turn count run or something like that, then that would be an issue. But for what I'm trying to do, I don't see that as an issue. Someone in my community raised the question like, well, what's the difference then between something like the lineage skill and using Marth's Mercurius to get extra XP and SP? And of course, I mean, to me, the big difference is you can only use Mercurius for three or four turns at a time because you have to be engaged. And then you have to use the Mercurius in battle. So it's more of a tactical decision of I'm going to engage now and be able to get as much out of this XP boost that you get from the Mercurius as I can before I disengage and have to build that meter back up again. Something like Lineage, you just put it on and you have it forever. And it's also not something that would be available in the base game, whereas Marth and his Mercurius are. So to me, there's a big difference there. It's a tactical decision of, okay, I want to make this character into a carry. I'm going to put Marth on them early, boost their bond level so that they have access to the Mercurius, and then can get a bunch of XP and SP before we lose access to Marth for a while. Cool. Makes sense. So to me, if you're not getting extra XP, SP, stat growths, it's not as big of a deal. Because at the end of the day, you could get Boucheron, for example, to an endgame build using just normal resources in the game just as well as you could if you used like the Noah turn on him, for example. So I don't feel bad about using things like that. Uh, the bond rings from Fey might be a little bit more contentious because those you're going to have access to more bond rings earlier than if you were just going to the emblem ring chamber and using your bond fragments to make bond rings. And that's important because we know that you only get SP on a character if they engage in combat and gain experience while they have a bond ring or an emblem ring equipped. So with those three extra bond rings, on top of the fact that they give nice stats and they have some like bonus uh, effects and abilities on them because they're S rank rings, you will be getting more SP. But I think that's pretty much negated for the short term early game boost that it'll give you versus just using normal bond rings that you make because skills are so expensive. In the like chapter or two, because if I remember correctly, when you get the like the DLC bonuses are deposited into your account, so to say, you don't have access to making bond rings yet for like a chapter or two. If my memory is fuzzy on that, then I mean this is a moot point anyway, but skills cost so much SP, especially the really good endgame skills that the extra maybe like 50 to 100 that you could potentially wind up getting unless you really focus down and knuckle down and grind and even then you're probably only going to get like an extra maybe 150 isn't really going to make or break anything in terms of using or not using quote unquote DLC items. So I don't think it's as big of a deal. The early stat boost that you get like, you know, the plus two speed from Anna, obviously very nice. Or is that for Sharina? I think it's Anna. At the end of the day, it's still, to me, not a huge deal because you're not, it's not permanent. It's not a permanent buff to your growth. It's not a permanent buff to your XP. It's just making those early chapters a tiny little bit easier. And you could definitely clear those. Like, they're not that hard, even on Maddening, without those bond rings and still have the same outcome for whatever character you're trying to use. So, I don't see that as big, of, or that big of a deal at all. That's kind of where I'm coming from for the way I'm doing Maddening and why I'm doing it that way. My plan is once I complete this run, and I've got builds online, and I've got a feel for how Maddening works, all that type of stuff, I will probably do a completely like vanilla Maddening run, no DLC, no nothing, like make a separate account that doesn't have DLC access so that I'm not like potentially being influenced, like, oh god, I forgot I had to like not use 30,000 gold, I used some of it, oh god. I'll probably just do that through a separate account. So that I can just go through base and just run Maddening as if it's day one straight out of the box, right? In terms of the emblems, it, the point was raised to me that certain characters will just have Lineage or Star Sphere by default because they have like the Emblem of Rivals or Tiki or whatever equipped to them. That is a fair point to consider. So my idea is that I'm going to only use emblems that don't give permanent stat buffs or like XP buffs 
whether they be baseline or DLC, on characters that I'm trying to do builds for. And as far as I know, none of the baseline emblems give anything like that anyway, if I'm remembering correctly, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So, like, I'm never going to have the emblem of rivals on Boucheron, for example. I'm never going to have Tiki on Jean, for example. But other characters, sure. Because, again, at the end of the day, I'm not worried about this challenge of this maddening run in and of itself. I'm more interested in doing maddening builds. So if I have a character like Alfred or, say, Panette or Tamara or a bunch of different characters that I never used originally in my first run, I can give them some of this other stuff and just let them run wild and be a little busted, whatever. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Because overall, it's not going to have a net effect on these other characters that I'm doing builds for. So, And that's kind of where I'm at with this run. As far as the idea of a run being valid or whatnot, that's something that, again, I've seen some people, especially newer Fire Emblem players in my community who've come in maybe with three houses or engage or whatever, talking about how they've received pushback from maybe longer term fans of Fire Emblem, longer term community members of Fire Emblem as a whole, and saying like, oh, well, this isn't valid, or oh, you use these items, so it's not right, you're not doing it right, or the challenge isn't acceptable, whatever. And the way I view that is, unless you're very specifically doing like a community-based challenge run or something, right? Like, say we're on Serenus Forest, and they're all doing maddening runs, and it's like a low turn count maddening run, specifically stated no DLC. Unless you're doing something like that, who cares? Right? Play the game the way that you're going to want to play it. If you're in a situation like me, where you're making content and you're like maybe trying to consider people who don't have it or don't want to use it when you're making build guides, things like that, that's one thing. But if you're just playing the game for yourself, I mean, it's in the game. Nintendo and Intelligent Systems made the DLC that they made. Busted or not, it is what it is. And if you want to use it to its full effect, use it. Why not? You can always do another run later. If you want to get the proper experience, quote unquote, and play a vanilla maddening run like I'm planning on doing. And that, that would just be for your own enjoyment. It doesn't matter. So I'm not avoiding using DLC stuff or anything like that because of any purity of a run idea or anything like that. And no one should give anyone else crap for using stuff that they bought. Who cares? Who cares? I'm not using some of that stuff specifically for the sake of making my content. And now... Hopefully, as people come in and they're watching the Maddening Run and all that type of stuff, this video will provide some context as to why I'm doing what I'm doing. And it'll be something that I can point back to. If people are like, oh, well, you had the DLC, so it doesn't count when you say, oh, I made this build, whatever, it'll work on Maddening. It will. Because I'm very intentionally avoiding doing things that would break the... I don't want to say sanctity, it makes it sound so sacred, but you know what I mean. That would break those builds for someone who isn't using it. So, I'll be doing that in the future. People can come back to this for that context. And it's just generally my thoughts on the DLC and stuff as a whole and how it affects runs. As I do more maddening runs and I experience more of what the game has to offer with and without DLC, maybe I'll wind up changing my tune, having some sort of difference in opinion from what I'm saying now. But I don't really see that happening. All of that said, my name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. Thank you guys for hanging out and listening to me chat. I know not my normal type of video, but it's something that I wanted to talk about and kind of lay out my thoughts for this current run of the game. We'll be live again very soon. I'll have the schedule up very soon for the coming week in terms of streams and potentially videos and all that type of stuff. Plenty of firearm, plenty of tactics ogre, all that good stuff on the horizon. With all that said... I hope you all have a good night, stay safe and healthy out there, and remember, be good to each other. Bye now.